So this um, quick video will go through how to use Excel to create a frequency distribution on any given set of data and a frequency histogram. So here is the data set. There's 200 points in it, all these numbers. And what we want Excel to do is to count how many times these numbers occur within the ranges we've set up here. So we decided on an interval of 10 for our counting beginning at 34. So the first interval, 34 to 43, is expressed as 43 because Excel counts frequencies backwards. So here it's going to look at 43 and below. And so it will count every time a number occurs between 0 and 43. Now we're okay to use 0 and 43 because we know 34 is actually the first count. And so in this set here, it would count every number between 44 and 53. And this one will be every number between 54 and 63. And you can see I've written that here. This is for later on in a couple of minutes when we create the histogram. So you can, these are just labels that will go on the graph. But this is what Excel uses to determine the count. So let's go ahead and select where we want to put our frequency distribution. Now this range of cells must line up with this range of cells because we're going to count in these boxes one by one. And so once I've selected my range appropriately, I go to insert function and I'm looking for frequency. Now I've been practicing, so frequency is at the top of my list. And we get this data entry box. <coughs> the data array is where the numbers are held. So that's this 200 data points. So Excel is going to look in this array of numbers. The bins array is where we've described the ranges we want to count within. And so I put that here. So I'm going to select these. And so now Excel will look at the ranges described in here, which is this column, and count how many times the numbers listed here, which is this, occurs. Now it's really important you don't click OK, so don't click OK. To make this work we have to do a keyboard shortcut, Shift, Control, and a Return or Enter key. And here we go. This is our distribution. And this should add up to 200 because there's 200 in here. So if I can do a quick check, I can just fill down and check using the sum function, and I get 200, so it's probably correct. But I don't need that, so I'll clear that. And we're done. This is the frequency distribution. The next step, because this isn't easy to see, is to create a histogram from this data, so we can visually see what this, what it look, what this data set look like. So I am going to highlight the data that we counted, our frequency distribution. I'm going to go to my chart wizard for my graph button. Select a fancy 3D version and click next. And so this is what that data looks like as a chart. The data range is here selected. And it's in columns. If I click rows, it doesn't look right. It's usually in columns. Now what I do have is these labels are incorrect, so by default it labels it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we don't want that. Remember that early on I said I, we, we'd created labels that would be meaningful for our chart. So if I click this series button here, it will give me the opportunity to do that. But what I'm going to do first is take the opportunity to change this by giving it a more meaningful name, in this case frequency. Now this is the line, the category axis labels, category axis labels, where I can select and get rid of those ones. So this, these are the labels. So I'm going to click in the box, and I'm going to select my range of labels. And you can see it's kind of added a bit messy here, but it will be, it will tidy up. Okay. I'm going to click next. Give my graph a meaningful title frequency histogram. I don't really need to label the categories because I don't know what the data is. Let's click next. It's going to be an object. I'll click finish. And here it is. I can make it a bit bigger so we can see all the labels. I can just move it down out of the way. And we're done.
This is our frequency distribution, and this is our frequency histogram. 